I know you guys love to watch me paint, but go watch a new episode of Graveyard Cars. We interrupt this program to inform you of what transpired on the last episode of Graveyard Cars. Hey there, Mark. At Will's request, Tony from Tony's Mopar Parts came out to the graveyard to keep Mark from introducing alternate facts. I love the fact that Tony came out here just to correct Mark. It gets Mark a little flustered even, so that's, that's always a real treat for us that we're here. After assisting Mark in educating the ghouls on their favorite CUDAs and Barracudas. Alpha numeric code on the Fender tag for D13. Including a 1970 Barracuda 3-speed 318 convertible. Bill Goldberg's 1970 CUDA 446 barrel 4-speed shaker hood car. And a 1971 CUDA 330 horsepower 383 Super Commando. Tony and Mark took an in-depth look at a car slightly out of their wheelhouse, a rare 1974 CUDA 318 two-barrel. Even though it's a CUDA, the performance model, it just started off with the 318 two-barrel. But now that the lesson is over... You sure? Yes, 335 horse and oh, 70. Okay. Yes. For the ghouls. Do you have any questions about this particular car? I'm good. Tony decided to stick around and help out the team with a couple of things around the shop. So you know, since I own all the editing, <laughs> we're gonna cut out all my mistakes upstairs, right? You know that. Okay, good. This time on Graveyard Cars, Mark attempts to trump the Mopar master, Tony D'Agostino, with a once-in-a-lifetime factory faux pas. Or is it a fraud? Have you ever seen anything quite like that? Uh, no. Also, the 1972 Duster is nearly complete, and the owner is on his way for the big reveal. But before the very first Graveyard Motors dream car is delivered, the team needs to fire the engine and finish the car's final details. That is, if Mark doesn't get too distracted by Tony. Don't freak out when you see something like this. Never say never. Never say never. In Springfield, Oregon, Mark Warman, together with his skilled ghouls. It has been established that the unburied dead are coming back to life. Bring classic Mopar muscle cars back from the dead to look like they did the moment they left the factory floor. Because of the obvious threat, this station will remain on the air day and night. I think we're going to have a good week, my friend. Yes, we are. Do you know why we're going to have a good week? Uh-huh. We're going to get a duster running. Mr. D is going to be here at the end of the week to take delivery of the 72 Duster. So we've got to put the information labels on it, the badging, do the final wipe down in detail. I want to check the stance, the air shocks, make sure everything's doing what it's supposed to be doing. And then we get the big reveal. But this is a really cool thing because it's the very, 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 very first Graveyard Motors car. Where he just picks up the phone, boop, 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 boop. Long distance, right? <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to have a 72 Duster with a 340 at four speed. I want it to be tawny gold, black bucket seat interior. Uh huh. And I make it happen. Uh huh. Graveyard Motors, the wave of the future. That's going to cool. be the big dealership. Going to be all the people running around wearing their little. Uh... <laughs> well, let's see, togas? in the 70s, what did they have to. Yeah, togas, togas. right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think all the people. Uh oh. Double boy, Z's. That was cracked out of her head. Look at that. Yeah. She was gnawing her shoulder off. Uh huh. Big Tony is still here. We're going to have him go over the VIN mystery on our 440. Find out why in the world. Can't let everybody know. This is a big, this is big. It's the biggest mistake I've ever seen in a VIN stamping in my entire life. And D'Agostino. Tony D? Tony D is going to take a look at it and see if he can add his expertise as to what he thinks it could be. I think that's great. Is that a dead cat? No. <laughs> It's not like a normal VIN mistake where they've transposed a number. This is huge. So I'm really looking forward to hearing what he has to say. He's good. He's he's very practical. He's very pragmatic, if I can use a big word like that with you. You still with me? Yeah. We're still talking about the duster? Where'd you go? 
Oh, nothing. I thought I saw a dead dog. No, that was a little bit ago. It was a dead cat. Oh. <laughs> so we're going to work on uh, the duster a little bit, huh? Get it ready? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, what are we going to do to it? What do we got to do this week? We're going to put some badges on it. We're going to talk to Tony and solve a mystery. That's a, that's over in the machine shop. We're going to talk to him about the 440. You remember our mystery van? I do. You do? It's almost like it was for a different car. What's the mystery? Well, the numbers are wrong for the car. It's not the right number on the engine? I don't know what side it's on. You have any idea where we are? Yeah. Or what day it is? Graveyard cars. Yeah. Yeah, today is graveyard cars. I think you'll be driving your own car here soon. <laughs> Probably. I used to enjoy these a lot more when I was by myself. Here we go. <laughs> So right now we're getting ready to go out and fire up the 1972 Plymouth Duster 340 four speed. This is the very first graveyard dreams car. What, what? Yeah, I love it. Nice car. This car was originally a slant six car. Owner back in New York reached out to me and said, I want a 72 Duster like I had when I bought it brand new. He still had the original Monroney sticker that was in the window, the window sticker. And we have duplicated his car from 1972. This is gonna be an epic reveal. So, I wanna compliment Justin for putting the car together. Excellent work. Thank you. You are responsible for, and we're still filming, so. Oh, Don't it? Yeah. Thank you. Don't it? No, I care mm. about my health. So it doesn't matter. Thank you, George. You're welcome. <laughs> like, Thank you, like friend. romper room. It's like romper room. <laughs> Cheers. See, you read about the ongoing cholesterol problem in the country. What? Fat. You just, <laughs> I can actually hear you getting fatter. Okay, let's roll this thing out. What's break time? Uh, yeah. Can we finish our donut first? God. Okay, so I want you to just man that side of it, look for anything weird, leaks, fuel leaks around the fuel filter. Okay. Doug, you're gonna run the distributor. We don't know exactly where it needs to be, so uh, we'll just try starting it under its own power, then we may need to prime it, and then we may need to play with the ignition, so let's do that. All right. All right. <clears throat> Dang cold. Okay. Contact? Yeah. Mark, it's not firing. Well, there's no fuel in it. It's, I was just oh. gonna crank it and let it build the oh, fuel Oh, I'm up. sorry. Stand back. Oh my God. Oh, we got a leak. Okay. Yeah, we got a leak. All right. Right back here. Go ahead and get your wrenches and tighten that down. But it sounded promising. How does that happen? Well, I don't know. <laughs> it's a crazy <laughs> it's... thing. Where's he say it's leaking at? Oh, uh, the, the fuel. The Hit my arm, Kathleen. Yes. Okay, yeah. Go ahead and give it a good reef. These things need a good reef on them. Okay. okay. So I'll crank it over and you tell me if we're green light. Because it's probably going to fire. Okay. No primer fuel this time? I don't think it needs it if it's right. coming up that far. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Advance it a little. Well, hang on. Hold that choke for me. Look at that. Wow. You like that, Justin? It sounds healthy. What? It sounds healthy. What? Oh, it sounds good. Yeah. Look at that. Fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. Very nice. Awesome. Yeah. Good job. All right. Daddy, like when a car start. Okay, we can pull that baby back inside. They're coming over to do the windshield and the back glass. 
Okay. Uh huh. Okay with me. Wiper motor should be here tomorrow. I tracked it. Excellent. That's a good thing. I still got to do decals on it. Still got to do decals. Show these guys a dance move. Show them that one I showed you back in '83. Remember you take? It's the teapot. Remember? <laughs> you don't know, remember you? Teapot. You hands out like that. And you, I'm a little teapot, sure and stout. And it's. And we did it at the milk camp. Was that you? No. No. Oh, that's right. I remember Doug at the mill camp. That's right. He did the Frankenstein, the zombie. <laughs> yeah, he did the zombie. Everybody's out and busting a move. You know, it's discos, right? And people are twirling and stuff. And everybody's having fun. And Doug's in the middle of the dance floor. <laughs> well, Doug, you could move. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was a little more animated, but not much. All right, let's get this thing back in. Good job, gentlemen. Oh, Woo! Jeez. Please. Oh, he's still going. <laughs> he's still going. I call this one the. <laughs> 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 oh, Winning. Oh, boy. car was built specifically for stock car racing and was 20% more aerodynamic and efficient than its brother, the Charger 500. Dodge built 503 of these cars just to meet NASCAR's requirements. And the fact that Richard Brickhouse piloted its very first race during its debut at Talladega makes the Dodge Charger Daytona our corpse of the week. I thought that while Tony was out here, I would get his feedback on something. I bought a 69 GTX for a client. It was intended to be purchased and restored for the guy. It's a real GTX. The gentleman we bought it from said that the engine was not numbers matching, which is fine. This was gonna be a kind of like a graveyard dreams car. But when we got the engine out and turned up on its side to check the VIN, it's completely wrong. It's completely, it's for another car entirely. It's not just a typo, it's not just a, a mistake where they put an H where there should be an L. It was a complete mistake. So that's why he's out here. I wanna get his opinion on it. I wanna DNA this thing. I wanna investigate what's happening, why it's happening, and what get his feedback. To, you know, you've seen a lot of engines. You probably, he was doing this before I was. So 1969 Plymouth GTX. What was the standard base engine in that model? 444 barrel, high performance, 375 horse, Super Commando. What engines were available optionally on the 69 GTX? Only the 426 Hemi. What was the alphanumeric code for the 426 Hemi in 1969? In the VIN? In the VIN. J. Yeah. What's the alphanumeric code for the Super Commando 440 in 69? L. Okay. Could I have, if my uncle was working at the Dodge plant putting these engines together or wherever that was, and I wanted a 383 in my uh, 69 GTX. Got all the money in the world, plus my uncle works there. Could I get it? Would they do it? You couldn't order it like that. The assembly line would not put a 383 in a 69 GTX. No, I can't see how. When you look at this plate, this mm -hmm. uh, machined off area, this ID pad, what do you see? What are these first numbers you see? Letters and numbers. Okay. Well, you have E, which stands for the model year 1969. Okay. It started in 1965 with A and went up. These, these numbers, these were put in here when the engine was assembled? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so E meant that it was intended for a what model? 1969 what year model? model year. Model year. Which started earlier. Yeah, it started in yeah. August of 68. Right. There were engines, I've had engines that the were previous, assembled back in yeah, July. I have seen know. the same thing too, right? right? Not a lot, but right. But they're there. So E and then the next three are? 440, the engine. Cubic uh, inch cubic displacement. Inches, yeah. Okay. Uh, down here in the bottom, the first number is a? Eight. And what does that represent? Uh, August. August. Built in, this is, engine was assembled in August of August. 1968. Right. And then what day? 13th. 13th day. And what do these two say and mean? HP means that it was assembled as a high performance engine. So that means it got uh, higher compression pistons, uh, different camshaft. But the, the carburetor, the camshaft, uh, camshaft the windage exhaust tray, manifolds, exhaust windage manifolds tray. Uh, distributor. valve springs, distributor. So it, they needed to let everybody know as they built this engine out that it was designed to go in an HP. Right. And is a GTX a high performance car? Of course, yes. In 1968, 
Was that the first year they started putting the vehicle identification numbers on the engine? Yes, yeah, 68 was the first uh, model year that they started putting the, end, uh, the car's VIN number on the engine. And how many of the 13 characters? It'd be the last eight. The last eight. The last it. eight. You have the year, the assembly plant, um, and then the, the six digits. The sequence. Uh, the sequence number. The car. But in 68, they were on top of the back of the they motor. Stomped it on, they stamped it right back here. Right. In the rough picture. casting. Very hard to hard see. Hard to read. Hard and to see in the car. In the car right? right. Hard to see in the car and even out of the car. You're struggling because it's on a rough cast. Okay. So that was the first year they put the VIN on the block for Chrysler. In 1969, did they continue to put the VIN on the block? Yes. 69 is a weird year for that. Okay. In, in 69 model year, they had the full VIN, all 13 characters, in order. So cars that were produced from, say, the beginning of August when the manufacturer started building them, somewhere through, let's just say, mid-year. Yeah, ish. probably, I think January is to cut off. They uh, didn't just put the last eight characters. No, they had the, the full VIN. So the full you could tell it was a two door, or a four door, or convertible. Got you it. Know. Yeah, you actually knew what it came out of. Yeah. Not just what assembly plant it was at. Right. Okay. You want to come on around here, and we'll take a look at this thing. This. Have you ever seen anything quite like that? Uh, no. Not quite like that. Okay, ghouls. Earlier, I talked to you about the Dodge Charger Daytona. Let's see if you were paying attention. Who drove the Dodge Charger Daytona to victory during its debut at Talladega, Alabama? Was it Bobby Isaac, Richard Brickhouse, Buddy Baker, or Ricky Bobby? Stay tuned, we'll tell you after the break. All right, ghouls, so who drove the Dodge Charger Daytona to victory during its debut at Talladega? If you guessed Richard Brickhouse, you're right. Bobby Isaac drove the Charger 500 and also won. And Buddy Baker made history when he became the first driver to be clocked at more than 200 miles per hour on a closed course. And Ricky Bobby, he's from Talladega Nights, guys. Come on, Renat. I know how my dad's starting to feel. One of the things I want to do while Tony's here torturing me anyway is have him look at a VIN on an engine block that makes no sense. This, have you ever seen anything quite like that? Uh, no. Not quite like that. You've seen mistakes. Have you ever seen, and I'm not even going to say that's a mistake at this point. I want you, I want you to tell me what you're seeing right now Well, in, in, at a glance. Well, it's a full VIN. It's a full vehicle identification uh, number. But it's a full VIN for a 3D3 Super B. <laughs> and but 383 H is the VIN code. I mean the engine code for a 383 for a 383 high performance mm -hmm. in 69. What's WM? Right. The W is the coronet body style. Coronet body style is represented right. by the W. Right. M is the medium price range, which in the coronet body means it's a super big. Okay. 23 is two door hard top. Okay. H is 383 high performance. How many horsepower? Uh, 335. Nine is the model year, 1969. G is the assembly plant, which is St. Louis. And then the sequence number, you know, the VIN to the car, 108614. Okay. If you were to raise this up in the air and only have the ability to look at it from the bottom, maybe you couldn't even see the casting numbers very well, and you saw that stamped in there, you'd think you're looking at a Super B, a 69 Super B. If you didn't know anything else, if I just brought you out with blindfolders and I said, look at that number. Of course. Of course, right? That's what it calls out. But we've already established it's a 69 GTX, which is 440 is the only standard engine in it. Hemi is optional. Right. Okay. Here's where things get weird. We've seen situations where one letter is either omitted, two letters are transposed, sometimes more than that, maybe three letters. These are human beings that are doing this. But this guy not only put a full vehicle identification number to a 1969 Dodge Super B with a 383, which was the standard engine. Right. That same crack shot, amazing person. Take a look at the transmission that was bolted up to it. WM23H9G108614. <laughs> so not only did he stamp the engine, which is a 440 and could never be mistaken with a 383, I guess, unless you were drinking a little bit on the assembly line, but he carried it into the transmission. It should have, this car being very early, the full vehicle identification number right. to the GTX. Which would have been like an RS23L9. RS 
I believe, and you know these parts a little bit differently and better in some ways, I don't mind admitting that. The actual transmission part number, 2892 093, is the same for a 383 HP and a 440 HP. And, and an A12 car also, yes. An A12 would have got it as well. Mm -hmm. So we know the engine's correct for the car, we just have a discrepancy here in the vehicle identification numbers. Yeah, I'd like to see what the 10,000-day uh, calendar uh, decodes to as far as the date the transmission was assembled. Because when when was the engine assembled? Uh, August 13th. August 13th of 1968. So this should be in the same process. So we area. would think that this one would have been about the same time. Right. All right, let me get my book and we'll check it out. It's a hot August night, 1979, and you're going to the Motor View Drive-In in Springfield, Oregon. And you're going there because Cousin Dougie's dad, Uncle Doug, works there and he gets you in for free. Your two choices to drive to the theater. 1964 Dodge A100, 1971 Cuda 340 convertible. Now, this car has a Ray Barton 923 horsepower second generation Hemi with an 871 blower shop blower on it and will probably flip over backwards when you step on the gas. This vehicle has a convertible top white interior in violet 343 speed, one of eight made. Which one of these vehicles do you take to the show? Go to Graveyard Cars, type in your answer. We'll reveal it live next week on Facebook. So far, the team fired up the 1972 Duster, and Mark introduced Tony to a car with a mysterious VIN. Have you ever seen anything quite like that? Uh, no. Still to come, Tony and Mark continue to dissect the VIN, determining if it's a fraud or a once-in-a-lifetime oddity. Don't freak out when you see something like this. You never say never. Never <laughs> say never. And the owner of the 1972 Duster arrives for the reveal of the very first Graveyard Motors dream car. A lot of people couldn't care less about it, but to him it means everything in the world, therefore it means everything in the world to me. Since Tony's here anyway, I've got an engine I've been working on that's a true mystery. We just haven't quite figured out how could this have happened. So the part number is a... Right, the, the cast number is a 2892093. I think they started to use it in 68. They did, you're mm -hmm. right. Yeah, 1968 B and C body, 440 and 383 HP. They're saying 440 late. And then same part number, 2892093. So basically, as far as our 69 model year goes, it was the only transmission they offered behind a 383 and a 440, an automatic. But it, this is the correct transmission yes, absolutely. assembly number to go into our 69 GTS. Absolutely. All right, now the 10,000 day calendar. Uh, 256, or eight, 8, 2568, 2568, it's all right. August 8th. Fits right in with the motor. And five the car five was built, within five the days engine of each was other. Built on August. Just to be clear, this transmission was assembled August 8th, 1968. And, and it could have been the next day they finished it or the day before, but that's the time zone. And then August 13th. Five days later. Five days later, yeah. they assembled the engine for it. What's the last, what's the sequence code at the end? 108614. Here's the VIN off of our 1969 GTX. Not only did they put a 69 Super B vehicle identification number on it, but they gave it the sequence number for the 69 GTX. So it's, <laughs> so it's got the right VIN. Absolutely, except for what it from came out of and went into. I haven't seen one with that many mistakes on it in all my days. I've seen a lot of stuff, but I haven't seen one like that. With you, with you there, I have a question for you. The folks that are out there that might say, well, it's easily explained, it was a restamp. Okay, we'll look at that and we'll see if there's any evidence of that. A restamping, first of all, is a federal crime. You get to go to prison for fraud when you do stuff like that. If you're doing it for the intention of pulling something off, if you make a note of it and you say that this is the, the machine shop ground off the numbers on my 383, so here's a picture of it before and here's a picture mm -hmm. of it again, you put them back in so you can see them, fine, no problem at all. What motive in the world would a restamping fraudulent criminal have in putting the wrong then completely 
on a 69 four-barrel GTX that isn't well, worth that much in the, in the yeah, end anyway. But first of all, the, the police department or, or the death department or FBI, who's ever looking, they don't care about the first part of the event. Couldn't care less. They care about they the They care sequence. about the last eight. Right. And the last eight is correct. Right. <laughs> so they could get away with it from that standpoint, but what's the motive in it? You just... That car would be better off if they had put no numbers in it and just put a date coded 440 in it like it's supposed to have. But this is the right engine. I believe it's the engine it started life with. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I have no doubt. We'll agree that this one, and you get some good pictures, I'm gonna send them to Dave Weiss and I want him to be able to put them in his book. Oh yeah. For as an example, well, don't freak out when you see something like this. You never it's, say never. Never <laughs> say never. Hey ghouls, is this statement true or false? Dodge built 500 Charger Daytonas in order to meet NASCAR's requirements. Think you know? Stay tuned until after the break. Okay, so did Dodge build 500 Charger Daytonas to meet NASCAR's requirements? No, you guys, they built 503. You have, you have no excuse. I literally just, just told you guys in Corpse of the Week. Crazy town. So Tonya and I are in complete agreement. The complete vehicle identification number that is stamped into the side of the block and the transmission match each other, but they have nothing to do with a 69 GTX. So now the question is, why are they there? You can see those milling marks in there, right? Yeah. Swooping down like that. Yep. The milling marks are what's done when the block is being uh, machined. Right. You know, so that's there. And those marks are you know, pretty specific, I guess. I, I would say it's so. Not, it's not what you would get today at a machine shop. I'm not saying it couldn't be duplicated, but again, I, I can't see any motivation for this. This is a freak. It's, it's just it's a, a freak. It's a freak. It really is. The guy on the assembly line could have been drinking. It's always possible. Or he could have been in a hurry or just plain not paying attention. I've seen double stamps and triple yep. stamps because yep. somebody did something I, wrong. I've seen him stamped up above. I have too. I've yeah. seen him in that boss. Yep, absolutely. But to see that like that, the guy was reading some kind of a work order that called it out. To be, I mean, to be super critical, I could say the pad seems a little thin, but again, it's just probably you look at 10 different engines and they're not gonna all be exact. The uh, depth from the boss yeah, that they it, went it down like this, this area right here. Right, it looks like this may have been machined a little bit more gotcha. than some others. Here's a here's a 70. Now it's a 70, so it only has the last eight sure. characters, but look at the depth. I see what you're saying. The depth of this mill is definitely shallower. That's a little extreme, but still it doesn't make it not correct. It just you know, when you see something odd, you're overlooking for stuff too. But you know? the marks in it are consistent with that 10 inch mill head. Yes. So if but, somebody went later and they ground it down to stamp new numbers into it, you'd lost those milling marks. Right. So the mill made those marks. That is the way the height, the height of that box. And one thing, the fonts are a little bit different from uh, Lynch Road than they were at St. Louis. Yes. It was just an old fashioned screw up. That's all it was. So this is just a freak of nature or a freak occurrence. It is. Because you have the correct last eight of the VIN, which is really the most important that's part. The, that's that, the money That's stuff. what's on the yeah. end. That's what's on the body numbers, you know. That's right. That's what the, the hidden number behind the core support the, and the trunk lip on a B body and the, upper cowl. cowl and right, but that's what law body. enforcement cares about. You know, I mean, that, the last eight yep. at the beginning, they don't care what engine it came right. with. They're gonna check it. They're gonna read those off and it's gonna so, match. So what do we think happened? I would say, well, the guy screwed up. You know, the, the guy who was stamping made a screw up. Now, whether the previous car was from a 383 Super B, mm -hmm. and for some reason he just changed, you know, the last six, or maybe the, the Super B was uh, ended in 613, and he goes, okay, I'll just change it 614, next car, boom. Is there a chance there's a 69 Super B 383 car built at St. Louis that could have the VIN on the 383 stamped with this car's VIN? I don't believe so, no. I think that would have been caught. Because think about the location of the pad alone, something would have stopped them, right? Yeah. They're stamping in E383 down here. Oh, right, right. Yeah, it's... Well, this was done, no, you see, this stamp was done, what we're looking at on top here, that was done at the engine assembly plant. I assembled the engine, I'm the last guy on it. That's what Boom, I'm... I stamped it. Right. Now it gets shipped off to St. Louis. Right. So now the St. Louis guy gets it. His job is to stamp VINs. That's, all, that's his that's job. That's his job. Right. 
He doesn't know what engine he's stamping. He's supposed to know. From this view down here, if it's on some kind of a carrier or assembly line, it looks like every other big block that went by and probably every small may, block at that point. You're I, not looking at manifolds. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how the assembly line exactly ran, but this could have been in a, in a K-frame assembly already, ready to go in the car. And just before it does, that's where he stamps them. I don't think so, because you couldn't get in there and stamp those in there. But but I think it was getting ready to go on to one. Bottom line is, what is your, your final analysis at the end of the day? I'll say, Correct numbers matching engine, freak stamp. Yep. But because the last eight matched the car, I'm gonna say it matches. And 108614 is awful early. Oh yeah. Probably very much made in August. Hands down, yeah, that, that yeah. falls in perfectly. So it all adds up to the fact that it was a mistake on the assembly line. Yeah. Is what it is. So it actually kind of makes it cool. Yeah. You know, it's not a cubic dollar car where you just have to flying Jesus to give it something. I mean, it's, it's a it's a great car. And it's a conversation piece. And it's a great conversation piece. So you know, I'm sure the owner will have pictures of the VIN yeah. on the windshield of Prepared for everybody yeah. that's ready to call it a non-numbers car. That's okay. Neat. That's cool stuff. Good job. Well, you're probably getting hungry, huh? I got plenty of reserve. I'm good. <laughs> you're looking good, T. Did you lose a couple pounds yes or no? The truth. Well, here's what I do. I usually wear a bunch of extra padding and then when I say I've lost weight, I take it all off go. and I go, yeah, I've been working out this summer. I'm getting huge. Right now, Alyssa and I are getting ready to do the final instructional decals on our 1972 Plymouth Duster. What engine? 340. This is the very first Graveyard Dreams car where you can call me up and you say, listen, I had a 1970 Dodge Challenger. It was a 440. It was a four speed, four barrel, not a six pack. I could build that car for you. This is one of those cars. This is the very first one. The guy had a 1972 Plymouth Duster when he was 18 years old. He bought it brand new. He had been working at his uncle's gas station, saved up the money, and he custom ordered it. He still happened to have the Monroney sticker, the window sticker from the car that he had before he sold it. So we duplicated the car based off of that Monroney. So this truly will be, when he comes out and sees it, a step back to 1972 for him. I'm going to let you do the quarter panel decals on this car. By yourself, well not completely by yourself, I'll give you a little bit of yeah. education. Oh yeah, you can do Did it. Did you buy two sets of these? Nope, only one set and we have to okay. have mom because he's gonna be here to get the car, so. First thing off the bat, we're going to do the ethylene glycol, <laughs> glycol warning label. Okay, ethylene glycol warning label on this particular A body can go anywhere in this run right through here. A lot of times from the factory, they would hide oh. the body numbers. That's why they were called hidden hidden body numbers. So a lot oh. of times they actually hide that. Okay, go ahead and it goes right over here like that. Make sure it's covered just like that. And then just go ahead and run your fingers across it. Beautiful, awesome, good job. Okay, this is the emission decal. This is gonna end up right here. Line it up and then start working it like this across. Because if you drop this side down and it locks down, you're gonna get an air bubble in the middle. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna to wanna to just work it across like that and then drop this down as you go. Yep, just like that, just like that, and perfect. Awesome. Good job. All right, two decals down. Now we're done under the hood. Let's go open up the door and put in the tire <laughs> information God. decal. Oh, the dream we even train. I think I could have been a singer. I don't. I think I have some of the basic chops. It's a little pitchy. I was a big Stones fan. I had every eight track up to 1978 in a case in the back seat of my car. Very good. Now let's move to the trunk. Stop right there. There and that. Now, so with that, we are ready for you to do your 340 decals on the quarter panels. You wanna do the passenger side or the driver's side? Uh, passenger because Jim will see it probably less, right? because he gets in on the driver's side. Very clever way to sidestep not doing a good job. Yeah, that's negative thinking. We don't do that here. I wonder where I get that cars. from, Dad. All right, so here are our 340 decals, <laughs> is we're gonna intersect it with this style line right here at the bottom. Yeah. And that style line right there. That's the way the factory did it forever and ever, amen. You take your time, make sure it's clean, get lots of the application gel in case something happens. If something peels back, you don't go berserk and, and start screaming and swatting your head like Rain Man did. So with that, we are able to take our car and do a final wipe down vacuum. The owner's going to be here. We're going to unveil it. This is the first Graveyard Motors car. He's going to walk in here and defecate.
I'm Jim DeLucci. I'm here to see the car for the first time. Mark had it a little over three years now, and uh, the reveal is today, so I'm anxious to see the turnout. Okay, here we go, Jimmy. Okay. Little Alyssa, little Willy Willy won't. I'm actually really excited to have Jim come out here on pretty short notice, to be honest. Remember, this is the guy who called me up and said when I was 18 years old, I bought a brand new car, I still have the Monroney, and we were able to build an exact duplicate to that car. So I'm very excited to see him get out here and see his car because I have a feeling it's gonna be an emotional time for him. Yes. 17 years old, you go into, what's the name of the dealership? Mahoney Motors. Mahoney Motors. South Broadway, Yonkers. In Yonkers, New York. Your mother's with you. Correct. So are you ready to go back to Yonkers, New York? 1972. Yeah, definitely. All right. First thing we're going to do is turn on the Show Car Pro wheel lights. Wow. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Starting How to see some that? detail under yes. the car. Yes. Okay. Yes. Next thing we're going to do, turn on the park lamps. Wow. Headlamps. Oh. We're going to do house lights on zero. Three, two, one. House lights. Wow. <laughs> Take Damn. it in, brother. Wow. Take it in. It's 1972. Holy, Holy smokes. <laughs> Absolutely I, stunning. Look at that. This is like 1972 all over. It again. is, I it mean, is. It's know, better than what, I mean. Well, it might be a little better than yeah, it was in 72, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody will ever no, get I'm mad at me better. for making no, something no, better definitely. or nicer. We've got your duster emblems. Okay. We've got your Krager 14-inch mm -hmm. was that you put on within just a few weeks after you got the car. Right. And you retained the original Polyglass E70 14s. They are on there. We paid attention to detail. Your car did not, but you always wanted the 340 call out on Correct. the quarter panels. Correct. I remember you mentioning yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. Let's walk around the backside. You'll notice Paint something else right that there. you mentioned to me one time. Not my glass. Yes. Do you remember mentioning yes. that you wanted a duster 340 on the back? Because originally you had 340 with just the duster, right? Right, right. Yeah. But this was an optional uh, decal right here mm -hmm. for the back end of the car. Those are the factory. The accurate exhaust built us a duplicate of the original 340 exhaust with tips. Yes. Take a look down the side. Did it ever look that good in 1972? No, it's like a mirror. No. <laughs> floor. Did a great job painting. Absolutely. I'm going to open the door and allow you to take a little peek inside here. <laughs> Just like a time capsule. I mean, I mean, uh, that should take you right back to 1972. Well, I was looking at everything he did to it, and I couldn't believe how identical to when it was in 72. Even special touches he did for me that made it even more, you know, special for me, you know. Today. And of course, the shark's tooth, shark tooth grill. grill. Yeah. This is like um, an old friend that you haven't seen in 30 years. And when you meet them, you pick up where you left off. Yeah. And the 30 like you never plus, missed a minute. I'll tell you what, it's like this never left, even though 30 years between. It, it's so amazing. Good. I mean, I absolutely love it. When Mark was taking me around the car, uh, I was showing him, you know, the way it used to be and what he did to, to the car to make it more updated was better than it was in 1972. They all did a lot of work into the car, and I just can't even describe how I felt when I first seen it for the first time. Jim, welcome back, my Thank friend, you. to 1972. You're gonna have a lot of memories. You're gonna flood our inboxes with pictures. Nice meeting you too. And the only thing that I can think would be better is it's a sunny day, mm -hmm. would be for you to go for a ride. Definitely. You in? I'm ready, oh yeah. Let's go for a ride. This is why. I do what I do. Now, I'm not gonna do the whole I'm the dream maker thing, although I am. In this case, this guy, 18 years old, buys the car, sells it 12 years later, and it's gone. The look on his face sitting behind the steering wheel of that car, that twin, I could see the emotion. I could see the memories rushing back. That's why I do what I do, and this is the greatest example of being able to bring something back that was gone from their life. A lot of the cars that we do in here are part of their lives, but they're sitting in a field behind the house, they're sitting in a barn, fell down around it. But this guy hasn't been able to sit behind the wheel of this car for many, many years, and you can see it in him. When I found about Mark doing restorations and bringing 
dead cars back to life. I said it was a, a no-brainer to do, you know. If I was gonna do it, do it right. I don't do it at all, so I figured I might as well get this car rebuilt like the day it was born. You know, for the most part, a lot of people couldn't care less about it, but to him it means everything in the world, therefore it means everything in the world to me. Of course, with my mom, uh, this will be a rolling memory of her and uh, her with me when I purchased it on my birthday, April 9th, the 72, and I didn't forget how to drive a stick. I mean, it's been 30 years, and you don't forget that. That's Boy, look at you go right to the neutral gate. Oh. You went yeah, right to the I neutral gate, know, right out know. of your habit. Oh, yeah. Yep. It's 1972 all over. That's yeah. the classic. I don't know why a car, a car guy will go to neutral yeah. every chance he gets. It's got to be the clutch. Jim is like a little kid driving this car down the road. Absolutely, <laughs> it cracks me up. He was 18 years old again. That to me, when you take that and you add up in total that one, we were able to find a car and two, we were able to build it like that. Three, he's still alive and healthy enough to enjoy it. I mean, it, it is a sentimental thing. It's a sentimental thing for anybody that has any kind of a heart at all. Uh, you know, words are beyond the way I feel about uh, the job they did. A ph phenomenal job that I think that uh, this was the greatest choice I ever made of picking him to do it. And um, they were all fantastic to me and, uh, you know, something I'll never forget. It felt like a, it's like a new family I met, you know, and I'll always keep in touch. Pictures of the car and everything else. Graveyard Motors, Graveyard Dreams. Very first time ever we were able to buy the car, have it restored, and make his dreams come true. How much better does it get than that? Well, Tony, we did it. What do you think? It was a good time. Covered a lot of stuff. I would like to say thank you very much for spending time on the 440 Bizarro, Bizarro oh, World, yes. as, as Seinfeld would call it. That was... V-I-N. That was something I'd never seen anything that extreme before. Uh, that was really... You, you and I have been doing it our entire yeah. lives, and I've looked at a lot of mistakes. I've seen even our Phantom Cuda. The last two digits were transposed. Happened all the time. Yep, but I've never seen a full VIN. A full a intentional VIN. a 383 car, but the last half of the VIN is correct for the car, and the first half is a total different vehicle. It's weird. You know. And yet, has all the supporting DNA that it really happened on the line. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. That's uh, That that was an eye-opener on that for me. That was. I, I appreciate you not letting me know you're coming out, so that was kind of cool. Always fun. That's the best way. Yeah. I got is. my spies in the shop. Yeah, I see that now. Judas, Mr. Iscariot himself, was in on that one. That's fine. Great. You notice how we're stopping and the train's coming this way? I'm not driving. Bye bye, buddy. Tone Tone. I saw this at the end of Dirty Mary Crazy Larry. Oh. Yeah, we're right on the middle of the tracks. Let's hope they don't chime. This is not oh, good. This is not good. Why did I do this? Because you were picking at me. That's why. Uh, Another way not to take responsibility. Oh boy, yeah. God, I hope the train comes from that side.